Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we want to take a look at a Legend League base which I'm using already over one and a half months, which is kind of long. And I finished with this base the, well for, if I upload the video it should be the first season. Um, so I finished the first season on number 40 in the world, um, in the top five somewhere in Germany, so kind of high overall. And even though it's an anti two server race, it's defending pretty good. If you want to use it, you should do it kind of quick because most of the bases which I upload are getting used a lot. So, um, well, it's, I think people will figure out a way on how to triple that at some point because, well, it's still an anti two star base. But yeah, in the beginning, I think a lot of people will still struggle to two star or even three star this base. So, what makes this base unique and why it's so strong? First off, if you want to see the traps, they will be uh, shown later in the video and I will try to explain it and what you guys can change if you get uh, attacked by one specific strategy a lot. Um, but at the same time, the most, like the thing what you have to keep in mind the most are the decorations on this one. If you have a known decorations can block the queen to reach specific areas, for example, this decoration over here, make sure that the queen can, cannot reach from the outside this air defense. This decoration over here, make sure that you can't reach this inferno tower. This decoration over here, make sure that you can't reach the town hall. The same with this, this and this decoration. All of those decorations deny the town hall or that your queen, the enemy queen, can reach the town hall. The same with this decoration is blocking this inferno tower. This decoration is blocking this inferno tower and this decoration is blocking this uh, air defense. <laughs> so if you want to copy th this base, make sure that you copy this decorations as well. Otherwise this base sucks completely. So if you want to make sure, copy this base. It, it, it's defending really, really good. Um, like I said, it defended for me one and a half month. I didn't change it at all. So it worked really well. And uh, yeah, I think Let's try to get in a couple of replays so I can prove to you guys that it's actually really good in defending. And all those replays were collected five days uh, before the last season ended. So I was around 5.6 to 5.7k trophies. So it wasn't too bad, so kind of high trophies, um, which means if you're lower, the attacker should be worse and well, even more one stars for you. So let's jump into the first attack and I will show you guys the traps a bit later and how you can adapt those if you're getting attacked by one specific army a lot. We're starting off with the Electro Dragons and Electro Dragons are pretty much an army which, are, which is getting used from the start of Legend League up to the top. Like pretty much everyone on an average trophy level, everyone might use Electro Dragons. So your base has to defend that. So let's take a look at how Electro Dragons work on this base. The first entry we want to try to look at is kind of pretty much like a small kill squad with the ram two of your heroes, like your king and your queen, for as much value as possible next to the ego. He's using um, the poison for this as well. And like I said, both of the heroes, like the king and queen and the ram, to get rid of as many heroes as possible. The enemy eagle as well. And then he tries to get inside the base to get even more value. Pretty important for him would be um, maybe expo and CC just so like cut the ring over there because in the end this base is kind of, it's sort of a ring base. So if we can if we can cut the ring as an attacker, we are always good to go. But since this part of the base is so well protected, you can't really cut the ring too easy. That's one of the main strengths of this base. And let's take a look how it works when you didn't like did your job on the left uh, on the right side. He's using the Lash Dragons, kind of spamming them in. He activated the Town Hall really early because there are so many percentage on the right side of the space. So the Town Hall is getting activated really early and the Lash Dragons are coming in. The Sweeper is pushing them away and there's no pathing at all to the Town Hall, which means this first attack is going to be a one star. Even if the Dragons would have went to the middle, we have the other Sweeper who, who could have pushed the Lash Dragons away. But with the setup of the sweepers, it's super hard to actually get to the town hall with something like dragons or electro dragons. It's a little bit easier for Lalo, but we will come to this a little bit later. But since electro, uh, like Lalo isn't getting used too much, we don't have to like think about that too 
um, too much because right now most of the guys are using more something like Queen Charge, Hawks or something like Mass Hawks. Like I said to this as well, we will come to this later. The next attack is once again Electro Dragons with a different ap approach. This guy's I think he doesn't, re doesn't really know what and how the decoration um, feature <laughs> works. So he's trying to get rid of the Inferno Tower with his Queen but that doesn't work because well the Inferno Tower is protected by the decoration so you can catch a lot of people off guard with this trick and gain a lot of trophies. All of his dragons are coming in, he's trying to get the slammer onto the Inferno Tower to open up the wall to make sure that his own queen is going to the town hall. Meanwhile his elect dragons are going once again around the town hall like I said because that's how this base works and he opened up the wall to the town hall but because there is this one decoration, once again, the queen won't go to the town hall. So this base is just crazy when it comes down to the queen, because it makes actually the queen kind of useless. She can't reach the, infer like, the important buildings, like the inferno towers, the town hall, uh, air defense, etc. So it's super tricky to actually use her. Um, meanwhile, the electric dragons going on the outside, flying around, getting a couple of more percentage, but in the end, it doesn't really matter if you get like, 60% one star or like 80% one star it's a one star and this means a lot of trophies pretty much gained by the defender so that's super important to make sure that this town hall isn't going down still standing eagles going down and like i said in the beginning the king is super important even in those electric against attacks because he might not defend himself but he's running around having a lot of hit points and the electric dragons can't really do anything about that and he well, they pretty much have to follow him and they're kind of useless. Meanwhile, the next attack is going to be Hawk Rider attack. Like I said, this is super popular um, at the top and in the middle of the trophy range. It's like super, super popular because it's super strong. But the main weakness to this strategy is the ring base. I had so many top guys like in the top 50 of the world failing on this base, like getting um, one stars. One guy had even a zero star. So. It's working really, really well against those uh, like kill squad hawk rider attack. This guy is already using his warden for the main push because he knows, okay, this is going to be tricky if I can't get the expos because if the ring isn't like cut, um, my hawk riders will go wherever they want pretty much. So they have to get, uh, he, he has to get the expos down. Otherwise he will have huge issues. He gets them down, which means he can, or well, he has a chance but he's using all of his Hawk Riders onto the first um, onto the first Archer Tower, which means they're spreading nicely, but he has no uh, Hawk Riders left to place them on the left side to actually push, push his Hawk Riders into the base, which means, once again, I think you guys know the story, they're rocking around and those Spring Traps, those Spring Traps are crazy. Always three Hawks are flying. That's super important in those anti-Hawk bases or like in those anti hawk parts of a base always three um, hawk riders are flying the next one will come in a second and here we go again a couple of more hawk riders are gone and you guys see already he has no heal spells left even more hawk riders are flying and the inferno tower will wreck everything our town hall is still staying and even if he gets to the town hall we all know there are still those ground skeletons so that's super important to keep in mind the next one is going to be a uh, Packer Smash. A lot of guys are using at the moment two Electro Dragons to funnel because it's super easy and kind of efficient when it comes down uh, well to being lazy because Queen Walks can fail. You can pretty much fail the funnel of a Queen Walk so the Queen is going to the wrong direction which is horrible. So a lot of guys are using Electro Dragons because like I said it's easy. Like you place those Electro Dragons, maybe a Coconut Loon. I, did, I think he hasn't even dropped a Coconut Loon but that's basically it and then you spam everything in between that's how people are using pekka smash right now and the sad thing about that it's working well luckily not against this base so let's take a look how this works he's using the warden early so his ram can enter the town hall and most of his troops are staying alive during the shots of the eagle and he's trying to get even further into the base but we have a lot of ground skeletons around the town hall so this is making sure that the queen can't really get through those defenses and the town hall will stay alive. With the town hall being still alive, this means that all of our troops around 
will get massive damage. The town is dealing so much damage that even the pack are melting and not really any troops can reach the town in the beginning. So he has to freeze it again, drop even the bad spells onto the town hall to make sure that this is going down. But because he had to invest so much to actually get the town hall down, he didn't really kept track of his percentage. Because we have still on the left side the wizard tower and the hidden Tesla, he can't really get too many percentage over there. And this means this base is going to defend on one star with even less than 50%. So that's that's crazy. And this is how, uh, well, a couple of guys are trying to Pekka smash this base. And like I said, a lot of players will enter from this side with Pekka smash. So that's why we have a couple of black mines over there. The next attack is going to be once again Pekka smash as well. But this time we have a different approach on the base. This time we have kind of like a small queen walk. Um, he's trying to get rid of the enemy eagle and the enemy queen early, like the CC, which is kind of clever actually, but he has to use a lot of spells for that um, and has to bring a lot of time because it's not too easy to get all of this value over there. So he's getting rid of the enemy queen. He got rid of it already of the warden, but because the warden itself is doing so much damage, he has to use already the rage. That's already the second rage he has to use to get through the enemy CC which is in my case a lava hound like i will all, like when you're using this base i will tell you try to use a lava hound in after cc it's super strong on this one so he's trying to get even deeper the he's dropping this troops but meanwhile he isn't really paying attention to his queen and the queen is dying with his queen being dead it's super hard to actually get even into the first layer because we have the tornado trap over there this tornado trap is pretty much only for this entry and for electron entries I will talk about the tornado trap later when we are coming to the trap placement, but this is basically it for this for the time right now. Since we have all of the decorations over there, even if the queen would have jumped in, I don't think that he would have gotten the town hall because, like I said, all of the decorations are blocking the town hall, that he can't reach it. Now, a couple of borders are running on the outside, king is somewhere, I don't know why, and well, everything is splitting apart, which means this is going to be once again a one star because the attacker can't get to the town halls. Funneling on this base is super, super hard and the key to the success of this base. With all of the decorations, you pretty much make the queen use, now useless is a little bit harsh, but you make the queen way less important because she can't reach most of the important things like inferno towers, air defenses, or the town hall. With all of this together, this base is once again defending on the one star against Pekka Smash. And I hope you guys liked all of the replays but now we will talk a bit more about the traps, what you can change if you're getting attacked more by, I don't know, Electro Dragons, Pekka Smash, how you can how you can change up the Tornado Trap, um, because I think that's one of the biggest things I might change if I have the, um, if I want to change something. But that's basically it. So let's get into the trap placement of this base. Okay, those are the traps of this base. Um, overall, I'm really happy with the traps. Like I said, I used this base um, over one and a half month with this setup. Um, but if you're getting attacked a lot by specific armies, I will uh, like tell you a couple of tweaks you can use to defend those. If you get attacked a lot by Queen Charge, uh, uh, by Electro Dragons, then switch those skeletons just to air. This base will be nearly impossible to do so for Electro Dragons with all of those traps set to air. That's the first thing. The second thing is, which I didn't tell you yet, is to use a Lava Hound and 10 Archers in your defensive CC. This is by far the strongest uh, on this base, but if you're getting attacked a lot by air, then opt into 30 Archers and one Baby Dragon, which is like really strong as well, but it's a little bit weaker against Pekka Smash. So it's up to you what CC to use. I use nearly all of the time this 10 Archers and Lava Hound uh, CC, which work really well for me. This is the first thing, um, the skeletons in the core. The next thing, if, if you want to switch the tornado trap, you can do so. At the top, I get attacked quite often from Electron and most of the people are trying to get in over here. The tornado trap is making sure that all of the loons are getting rotated away from the eagle, which means even though you're starting on the side, most of the time the eagle is still standing. So that's something which is this tornado trap like completely stopping in the beginning. But if you're not getting attacked too often by Electro Dragons, you can change completely the tornado trap. I think um, I would maybe prefer it over here. That might be a good spot because a lot of players are coming in from this angle. But in the end, it's totally up to you and you should try it on your own where the attackers are coming from. 
and maybe this will change over time, especially when people are like having ideas on how to attack the space. Um, that's mainly it. All of the black mines are should stay there. Um, therefore, those are for Pekka Smash entries and as well like uh, for Queen Charges, those black mines over here. Um, so they should pretty much stay this black mine as well. So I think over oh, I wouldn't change too much, but like I said, if you want to change something, the uh, skeleton traps and the tornado trap would be the first step. But that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked this episode and as well, like the base obviously, and I hope you gain a couple of trophies with that. I will see you guys in the next video.